Hey everybody, welcome to the Openly Hostile Opinions Podcast. Uh, we're available on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and your favorite podcasting platform. If you're enjoying what we do, be sure to subscribe, like, favorite, or review. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and uh, you can also drop us an email at openlyhostileopinions at gmail.com. Uh, any questions you have, anything you'd like to answer or talk about on the show, feel free to drop us a line. How's it going, Casey? What's up, Jay? How are you doing? Uh, I'm alright, except for I'm feeling a little funny. Yeah, I heard. I uh, heard you weren't uh, feeling too well the other day. Yeah, a little, little under the weather. Yeah. Uh, so today we are drinking Otto's Double D IPA. Um, a f- Double D titties. Double D titties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a friend of ours uh, from from long ago named uh, Charlie Schnabel uh, runs this joint. It's up in State College, and I uh, figured we go uh, local today. Yes. Rape it's College. Rape College. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Cheers, mate. She has. <laughs> that is hoppy. Oh my goodness, yeah. That is. That is really delicious, though. That's very good. That is. Mmm. Uh, that's a lot better than last week's beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was. Oh man, that that stuff last week it, it made me so gassy. I was burping all day. <laughs> it was a it was rather effervescent, you might say. Yes, yes. Um, for this beer. If I was going to rate it, I would give it, I'd say, four generic breakfast pastries out of five. Uh, I concur. Yes. I'll go with four generic breakfast breakfast pastries out of five. Yes, it is very delicious. I would probably go into a coma if I drank more of it, but we'll see how that turns out. Very, very good, Otto. You did good. You did good. Yes, quite. Mm. All right, so what's up for today? All right, so... Um, before we do, um, you know, we usually do stories or whatever like that. But today, I'm just going to tell you a story. Uh, well, this ought to be good. Yeah, it, it's something that when I was told, it was like, I sort of felt like I needed to go to a safe place. <laughs> I, I know that's the big thing today. And I just, I wanted to rub myself in lotion and just cry for about 15 hours. What did, when did you turn into a fucking millennial? I, I don't know. Uh, and then, Well, actually, I'm not wearing flannel. I don't have a fedora or whatever the kids are wearing these days technically those are trilbies but. <laughs> whatever. so i have a friend and i wouldn't be bringing this up if i didn't trust him uh he right. he works around the amish a lot okay uh the amish are huge in pennsylvania i don't know are they popular in another state ohio uh, i think my, my wife's from ohio she said there's quite a few around yeah there too. so he does work for these amish people right well he's going up to the house and of course he hears banging so <laughs> He's like, should I wait? Should I knock? He just keeps hearing, you know. Rah, rah, rah. So, all of a sudden, he's waiting there, and the door just flashes open. <laughs> and these two little kids run out the door, and the mom is standing there, and she is fixing herself, pulling. <laughs> could you could you describe <laughs> fixing yourself? She she's basically put her. To her I don't know. Do Amish people wear undies? <laughs> I don't know. I've it, it putting her stuff back on. Well, he's like, what the fuck just happened? Well, she goes up to him and she goes, well, sorry, uh, I let them have at me so they leave uh, their sisters alone. (laughs) I was like, I was, he was like, gonna cry after he said this. He was like, I didn't know what to do, but I think I went into a mind coma from all, (laughs) from what? (laughs) Um. I've known some Amish people over the years, and uh, most of them are pretty normal, with the exception of the whole no electricity thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but that makes me feel like I need to go take some showers. Yeah, I know exactly. Do you remember uh, Ace Ventura where he finds out he kisses Ray Finkel and it's a win? He's yeah. like, with the, he has like ten packs of big red in his mouth and everything. Like that. I, I, it's just funny because how stressed does these little kids? Like molesting, like their sisters, give the mom where she's like, "All right, just have at me. I'm sick of dealing with this. I can't take it anymore. So maybe they just need to, you know, get their." <laughs> oh man, I just um, oh, I, I've been thinking. I've been, I've been waiting for this show for all week because I've been wanting to talk about this. And I told my friend, I was like, "Hey, do you mind if we talk about this?" Because I feel like. This should be talked about. 
<laughs> what do you think about this? Like, I, I've never heard anything like this in my life. Uh, I, I, for once in my life, am speechless. I, I don't know what I, to contribute yep. to this. I, I don't <laughs> Like, oh, I let them have at me just so they leave the uh, their sisters alone. <laughs> she was like, no big deal. I'll be right back. Make yourself at home. There's pie on the oven. <laughs> I mean, is there any chance that this could have been a misconception? I mean, English is not their first language. Yeah, uh, they definitely speak Hooskadoodle or whatever that's called. Hooskadoodle. <laughs> I believe it's called German. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, let's just hope that that was an error in translation. But she was fixing herself. And that's the thing. Like, well, Bitches always be clowning around and shit. <laughs> and I, I should have asked him. I should have asked him how old the kids were. But I was so shocked. Does it matter? <laughs> it does to me. Why? Because, man, how old are these kids that they're molesting their sisters? Does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it matters. It doesn't matter if you're six or 56. You don't fuck your sister or your mom. When I was six... It didn't take to the point where I had to have sex with my mother so I wasn't molesting my sisters. I don't think it happened at 17. Either that or we need to have a chat after I know. the show's over. Is is the sex drive of an Amish kid that strong? Well, it's not like they have video games to, to dull their rape. Oh, ages. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> I, I forgot we play video games just so we don't rape everyone. But I just... Oh, man. That's just funny stuff to me. I thought that was worth sharing because that just... I, I am... Shocked. Yeah. Uh, I just, yeah. We should have saved that for last because I really don't know how to top that. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, that's about it for that story. That's all I, that's all I really got for that one. I thought that was uh, a little, little strange. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, apologies to anybody who heard that bleed into the audio. Apparently, somebody just decided to land a UFO outside of the, the studio. Yeah, um, <laughs> someone was dropping a bunch of Amish kids off. <laughs> Ew. I know, dude. So, uh, that's, I, I don't know how to follow that exactly. I know. Uh, that's that's the thing. That's what I said. We should have shaved, saved that for uh, last. Should have shaved that? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I bet those... Uh, Legs on the Hooskadoodle wasn't... <laughs> the Hooskadoodle. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh, how much time do you got, Jay? Uh, this is an hour-long show, so not enough. Yeah. So, uh, what, do you, what do you got next? I don't, I don't know what, m- what much to talk about after that one, but there, has, right. there has to be something that crazy people are doing today. All right, so for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll get a picture of this. For those of you that are listening uh, as a podcast, we'll put a link to this picture in the show notes but uh let let me go ahead and explain this a man spends a hundred thousand euros to look like kim kardashian and this guy do you ever see the video for uh fine young cannibals she drives me crazy dude kind of looks like the lead singer of that band only with like ridiculous uh punching or boxing glove lips Tattooed on eyebrows. <laughs> oh, the eyebrows are tattooed? Uh, that's that's what this article says. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he spent $100,000 on cosmetic surgery and designer clothing in an effort to look like Kim Kardashian. Now, I've seen Kim Kardashian. You've seen Kim Kardashian. This guy does not look like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I would say... Like, I, if you see the picture, he even has his hand in it. Like, he's covering his heart or something. Yeah, with his manicured nails. Yeah, I, I think that's why he's doing it, because I don't know. He spent 20 grand on his nails. I don't know if he did. He uh, kind of looks about like, about the same as the guy who used to be the singer for uh, Dead or Alive. George, yeah. George Burns, I want to say his name is. Uh, or Pete Burns. Pete Burns. That's his name. Pete Burns. I just... what I, I'm looking at this picture, and I just... Where was the hundred thousand dollars spent on the all lips? of those lips? Apparently, holy fuck, man! I mean, literally, a guy looks like a big lip alien. I mean, you, people's lips don't look like yeah, this. Yeah, and like, oh, if I pulled a girl's pants down and her pussy looked like that, I'd run the other way. And that's on his face. <laughs> oh, here, here we go. Jordan James Park. He had fifty lip filling operations. Holy fuck, fifty man. Botox injections, laser hair removal. And at this point, he has also had a nose job. Because, you know, the nose job at this point. Yeah, fuck why it, not? why not? Why not? Yeah, uh, here's, the, here's the quote from the guy. Her uh, skin is perfect, her hair, everything about her. I've never felt better about myself. And I laugh when people try to insult me by telling me I look plastic or fake. Hmm. 
I, I just can't see it. Um, I can't, can't imagine why somebody would say the dude looks like plastic or fake. But here's the other one that uh, actually made me curious about this whole thing. Uh, it says here that he's undergone a 450 euro vampire facial, a procedure that involves injecting blood from the body into the face. What the fuck? Vampire. Okay, we couldn't top it. Now it's getting there. It's, it's getting and there. It still doesn't top that. But... <laughs> Uh, did he have I any did, bone surgery to restructure his face or anything? I'm sure there's some implants there. Cheekbones. Yeah, his cheekbones look a little... A little artificial? Yeah, a little little crazy. Uh, so, if he wants to look like Kardashian, did he spend any money getting the, the full Kardashian special where you get hogtied in your bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd imagine at this point he probably did. Kind of like that uh, scene in, in Rockstar where he had to get his nipple pierced after uh. he found out the uh, lead singer of... Of uh, whatever the hell the name of that Steel Dragon, yeah, Steel Dragon band was. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that movie. But oh. let's talk about the vampire facial for a minute. This is what intrigued me about this story because I had to go find out what the hell a vampire facial oh, of was. Of course, of course. Who wouldn't want? That's something like a Dirty Sanchez. When I hear it, that's what I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> vampire facial sounds like something that should be in a Twilight book. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so vampire facial apparently what they do is they take micro needles, which. I don't know how you make a needle any smaller than a needle, but anyway, micro needles. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And they stab you in the face hundreds of thousands of times in order to uh, create, force your body to create its own natural collagen and things like that. And then they rub your face down with a mixture of blood and other sorts of. Do they say nasties. where they get this blood from? From yourself. Ugh. They suck it out of the lower half of you and stick it on the upper half of you. Because somehow you're not going to be making enough blood by stabbing yourself in the face hundreds of thousands of times with needles, apparently. Uh, and see, people people say people that play video games have no life. <laughs> I think you're just trying to justify your own addiction. Yes, yes, I am. But uh, I just there has to be some way to spend your time. <laughs> there has to be a better way to spend your time than stabbing yourself thousands of times in the face. Well, when needle. you have more money than you know what to do with, what else are you supposed to do with it? Uh, <laughs> money! <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, what Does it say what he does for a living or anything? He's a makeup artist. A makeup Ooh. artist makes that much money? Does he do it for celebrities or anything? I have no idea, but uh, judging by the looks of this fella, if you need your makeup done, I think I would select other options. Yeah, because, you know, he would, instead of getting the eyebrows tattooed, you think he'd be like, oh, I could do something about these, about these bushes. You know, they make this thing called makeup. In fact, it's so easy, any idiot can apply it. <laughs> I just, uh, I, yeah, I would be spending money on hookers and cocaine uh, besides making myself look like Kim Kardashian, but I guess everyone's different. Well, you know, uh, everybody needs, uh, needs something to do. If yours is the nose candy, be, be my guest. Yeah. Um, and, and the do it! The funny, Just do it! The funny thing is, is this probably isn't the only person doing this. Uh, no. I there, know. There's been, in fact, there was a guy a while back. I don't have any show prep on this guy, so I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, there was a, a dude who spent tons of money, and the guy was in his 40s, I think, uh, to, to look like Justin Bieber. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. But not like Bieber now. Bieber's like a few years ago. Like child Bieber. Like... So he's like having like a Michael Jackson, like I, I had no childhood blanket. <laughs> I don't know what his reasoning was, but he, he, you know, did the bowl cut the whole nine and, and spent tons of money on this. And now he ended up offing himself because clearly somebody who wants to change themselves to the point that they're an entirely different person doesn't have mental issues at all. Huh. A guy that made himself look like Justin Bieber wanted to kill himself. That's weird. <laughs> Did you say Justin Bieber? Be what, what's his name? <laughs> what is it? Bieber? Bieber. <laughs> Bieber. Okay. Did, did I say beaver? Yes, you did. Okay, sorry. We were talking about pussy earlier, and I just, you know, got a little lost there. <laughs> I, I haven't heard about the Justin Bieber one. I have heard about, um, this was years ago, too, was some guy doing it like Barbie. He wanted to look exactly like Barbie. A guy? Yeah. I mean, I've seen the woman, though. Like or maybe it was a chick. woman. Yeah, this this was a long time ago. I think I think she was Russian. She wanted to, to where look was she? Just... Where was she in a hurry to go to? Sorry. <laughs> that... That was horrible. I know, I know, it was. Just, just, just going all out at the show today. Just breaking it all out. You know, Amish kids raping their mothers. You know, Kim Kardashian lookalikes. I mean, this guy. <laughs> that, that's the best part, though. Is like he's he got all that money done, and he's still like, oh, look at my nails. Mm. 
But he's bald, too. Like, Kim Kardashian has hair. I know. If you're he, trying to create the illusion, don't you think he ought to, you know, at least wear a wig? Yeah, he, and he probably does. I think that's probably why he shaves his head so he can fit his little wigs on or whatever like that. I looked at lots of pictures of this guy for the prep for the show, and I have not seen a single thing of him with hair. Huh. Uh, different types of fingernails done and things like that, but never hair. I can't... I. I can't believe we've talked about Kim Kardashian twice in a row. Well, I've I've talked about Kim Kardashian the last two weeks than I think I ever have in my life. Well, there's nothing better to make fun of than somebody who's famous for nothing. I know, I love it. Now now that we have to like talk about people, Kim Kardashian, if I want to make fun of someone, I'm just going to make fun of her, I think. Because the, just the sheer amount of stuff to make fun of her about and the people I guess you can be that obsessive with. I've never been that obsessed with someone that I want to spend that much money on, but I guess... No, definitely not. I guess, you know, that's Did, why they make Science of the Lambs films. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, hear about her latest, uh, now, now that since she's had that little robbery, uh, she's hiring what they're calling presidential levels of security? Not that I blame her. Yeah, I bet you that is fucking expensive, but when you're her, you can, you know fucking have pussy like gold hair if you want who fucking knows but vampire facials. yeah yeah vampire facials um hell you can even watch kids you know that are amish rape their mother for probably a certain amount of money whatever she makes but what um is it secret service people actually uh retired 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 oh my god yeah, I, I you Can know you blame her. I, I would. know if I had the money and well, now you just got robbed. Well, there was someone on um, I forget what social media neck one of those that waste time, <laughs> but uh, a lot of people were saying she deserves it. She's a piece of shit, blah blah blah. And this That's person was cool. like, it doesn't matter how much she annoys you. She didn't deserve to get hog tied. Yeah, no, put nobody deserves that. Yeah. She she's just <laughs> awful, but she's not. She's still a human being. Yeah, yeah. And people were just like going after her and everyone's like, okay, she annoys you. That doesn't mean she deserved to get hog tied no. and put in a bathtub. No, there, there's worse people out there than the uh, the Kardashian Jenner brood. Yeah, and I did see a funny picture though. It was one of those memes on Instagram where it <laughs> it showed a picture and it said, "We found the man that uh, robbed Kim Kardashian." It showed Mr. T with all this stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting there like, mm, "Yeah." So I thought that was pretty funny, but that's great. Yeah, wonder what uh, next week if she does anything crazy or someone's doing something. To see about yeah, somebody about her. Yeah, we, we can't talk about Kim Kardashian three weeks in a row. It's just, it's going to give me nightmares. All right, Jay. So next, I'm going to talk about um, what's been going on lately with people. And, you know, everyone's doing these challenges lately and everything. Like the ice bucket challenge? Yeah. And then there was the people that would uh, put lighter fluid on their um, cells and set themselves on fire in the shower. Did you ever see light yourself on fire uh, no. challenge? Yeah, they were doing it because of the opposite. Well, the next next thing that I've seen, it, and it's it's funny, it's hilarious, is new high five selfie craze is the most efficient way to break your expensive phone this season. Yeah, people are trying to drop their phone and take a picture at the same time in midair, and that's the whole challenge. And get it, people are breaking their phones. <gasps> Who would have thought? <laughs> well, with Samsung uh, Galaxy uh, Galaxy Note sevens exploding, why not? Right? Yeah, yeah. I and mean, you're liable to drop it, and it's going to blow up on you. Yeah, and people still aren't turning those in, by the way. Um, the FDA or FFA, whatever the fuck that thing's called, is even banning them on airplanes. They're exploding cars and everything, and people still aren't turning them in. I just read about this this morning. Actually, Samsung is halting all production on them entirely because the replacement phones that were supposed to have the problem solved mm -hmm. didn't. So were they exploding too? They were exploding too. So I'd hate to be Samsung right now, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as big as they were getting, it's kind of nice that they got something to humble them a little bit. Yeah. Well, I got a picture of it here. We'll post it uh, for people watching on YouTube, and we'll explain it a little bit here. But yeah, so so here it is. Is um, could this be the death toll for? I doubt it, because people are narcissistic fucks. Well, there's a picture right there. So of you you <laughs> you drop it and you clap. Yes. Like this. Like, it's not even involving other people. No. It's you're doing a jumping jack. Well, yeah. It's him in the mirror. You know how they do it. They're like, uh. They're like, oh, I'm so beautiful. Oh. Well, he's doing it. He's, so he's holding his phone like this. And you let it drop and you clap. And, and, you and the idea the is to catch the phone then? Yeah. Uh, no. People are breaking them. That's, people are getting pissed because they're breaking them. And they're like, oh, my God, I broke my phone. Try What the fuck do you think is going to happen? You think you're gonna like? 
do you think doing this, you're gonna like discover some new kind of like cure for a disease or something? No, you're gonna break your fucking phone. Yeah, you're gonna gonna discover a new color nobody's ever seen before. <laughs> yeah. But oh, actually, Jay, okay. I want to try it. <laughs> you would. I want to get an older phone and try. I'm not doing it. my my uh, my phone right now. It's just wrecked. It's already cracked and everything like that. So um, I think you when have I, broken every phone you've had. In yes, the last, I have. Last five years. It, that's that's what happens when the the hooker says free for five and she doesn't <laughs> and buy you throw a it at case. Her. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I know I it doesn't should. look nice. I know it makes the phone bulky and awkward. But buy a case. See, a case. Yeah. And 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 the funny thing is, is these people are breaking their phone. You think you would buy a case before you did it? <laughs> put a case on. Put one of those uh, tempered glass screen protectors on. Those are beautiful. Yes. Uh, OtterBox is that what people the kids are still using these days? Uh, everybody switched to LifeProof, I think. Now life-proof. I don't know. Whatever. Is Just that... put a fucking <laughs> put, a, put a five dollar case on and a two dollar tempered glass screen protector. You'll be golden. Yeah. And uh, the little comment here is pretty funny too. It says, "Today is the proudest day of my life. I successfully took a picture of me high fiving myself." Seth Schneider, wherever you are out there, you need hobbies. Yes. You, you I, I suggest picking up the guitar, <laughs> perhaps painting. Painting can be soothing, I understand. Uh, and there's another thing. Two weeks in a row. Balloon animals? <laughs> yeah, we, we have someone that's doing something really simple or getting light-up shoes, and it's the best day of their life. <laughs> God forbid somebody be happy, but if you're going to like go ahead and drop your phone on the floor and then get mad because it broke, you're a dumb shit. Yes. Light up shoes, though. I'm still all about. That. <laughs> You're still shoes. all about that. Still all about the light but up see, shoes. See, pr- proudest days of my life are like my first blowjob and stuff that I, I I got. But this is, I guess, I'm just not with it. I am not hip. I am not cool. Playing too much of the online video games to be doing any of this stuff. I I don't know. What, what what's next? Do you think maybe get a job challenge, something like that? <laughs> I think you need to get a girl challenge, and this guy probably does too. I I have one. I just don't want anyone to see her. <laughs> You did used to date that chick that you called Stinky Butt for a while. Yeah, that yeah, that that was that was pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> and I told <laughs> I told all my friends <laughs> I told all my friends uh, one time I was like, hey, hey, don't say anything like that or anything like that. Five minutes we're out in the bar and uh, our friends like, hey, Stink Butt. <laughs> I'm just like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Any chance she's watching the show? I hope not. Please, God, I hope not, because I will probably be receiving hate mail. <laughs> That's a huge bitch. <laughs> and I will probably, you know, you, you'll come over next week for the show, and I'll be hogtied in the bathtub or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> with, with vampire needles in my face, or whatever the fuck that shit was called. What was it called? Vampire facial. Yeah, vampire facial. Sounds dirty, doesn't it? It sounds like something uh, you should have to put a verify your age for yeah. on the internet. <laughs> something that's illegal in 40 states. <laughs> that's probably going to be a porn category soon. Vampire face? Yeah, it probably already is, actually, uh, because of the Twilight movies. Yeah, it's just amongst lonely housewives. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, uh... All right, moving right along. <coughs> so, I saw the day a drug arrest in Scranton. Uh, Scranton. Scranton! <laughs> people uh, people found a, a... Police found 110 bags of heroin in a man's ass. Oh, man. Yeah. Did he enjoy it? I have no idea. Corey Davis of... 32 of Carbondale, uh, Pennsylvania, because of course it was, uh, was a hundred and was charged with uh, intent to deliver heroin and related drug offenses. No way. But here's the part that gets me: it was a noontime drug raid. <laughs> I mean, who wakes up at like eight o'clock, has yeah. breakfast, and like, you know what? I'm going to shove 110 bags of heroin up my ass. It's actually there's a term for that. I learned it in Florida. It's called boofing. Boofing. Yeah. <laughs> when you stick objects, Sounds heroin. Like a clown would do. Yeah, I know. Thing. Like, hey, hey, kids, get ready for the te- for, get ready at ten a.m. The the clown's doing a boofing special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I found that word out in uh, Florida. It was, yeah, it's actually called boofing. Oh, that's that's frightening. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe he ran out of coffee and he needed to wake up somehow. <laughs> boofing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure heroin ends up uh, putting you to sleep as opposed to. No, I, I mean just the sheer pre- uh, pleasure of, you know, if, I, if I'm if i tired and I'm getting, you know, a bunch of bags of heroin shoved in my ass, I'm waking up real quick. 
<laughs> like I, I think you and I have different rituals for waking up in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you uh you can drink coffee, I can't. I have really bad coffee problems. Like it just makes me see sounds when I drink it. See sounds? Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I go into like a <sighs> it's it's fucking coffee, not LSD. I know that's what coffee. I'm really sensitive to caffeine, like Apparently. really, really sensitive. But uh, yeah, maybe you know he's like shit. I gotta pick up my daughter from dance class. I'm not awake yet. I'm gonna crash if I drive. And he just shoved a hundred. What was that? A hundred balloons? Hundred and ten heroin bags. That's uh, all it says. Bags can you heroin. even? I can't believe you can fit that much up there. I mean, it didn't specify the size of the bags. Maybe it's just little ones. Yeah, that's true. Still that though, that's that's a pretty uh, pretty stretchy colon right there. Did and you said he was caught? Yeah, it was uh, it was a setup. So they caught him and his partner, uh, Jason <laughs> Cohut, uh, 44 of Scranton. And yes, I'm reading these names because if you're an idiot and shove 110 balloons of heroin up your ass, you deserve to have your name public, publicly uh, <laughs> publicly broadcast to the world. Yeah, these two jackasses uh, were involved in a noontime sting. So who set them up? The, the cops. I know, but <laughs> did they set them up with the balloon thing? Like, they got all into it. They pretended to be his best friend, and they took him out drunk. And they're like, dude, I'll bet you $200 you can't shove 110 b- balloons of heroin up your ass. He's like, you want to bet? And they do it, and they're like, we got him. We got him. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and then they just run in, and they're like, I got you, motherfucker. <sighs> I'm going to need backup. We have 110 <laughs> bags of heroin up a guy's asshole. I can't believe he did it. Hey, Frank, you owe me 100 bucks, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Money. <laughs> oh, that's that's so wrong. Yeah. So wrong, indeed. Boof it. 2016. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next one in the, uh, the world's got no chill category. Uh, Amazon UK pulled a sexy burka party outfit after a massive backlash. A what? You know what a burka is, Yeah. Right? The Islamic... Uh, yeah, it's a thing you dress. cook uh, ramen noodles with. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I might be saying this wrong, uh, exactly the terms, but we all know more or less what we mean by a burka. It's a full-length dress mm-hmm. with the, the head covering and uh, the, the face mask, the whole nine. Well, uh, Amazon UK had a sexy burka for sale. Uh, supposedly, it was a third-party seller who had it up. But anyway, it was basically a mini skirt with one of those head coverings. And Muslims freaked the fuck out. No. No, they didn't, Jay. <laughs> Let me read some of the quotes from oh, the this comments. Is great. This is great. Uh, is this some sort of mockery to the religion? One of the users asked. While another said, it's not a joke. Whoever you are, fear Allah. And somebody says, you're all discussing racists. My culture is not your costume. Another offended person wrote in, wrote in the feedback section. Uh, a person's culture is not a fancy dress comment, a costume. So anyway, uh, Amazon deleted the offensive burqa costume, and now it's listed as this product is, product is no longer available. However, while they removed the uh, female version, the male version is still there. And what's even worse about it is the guy, the model, who, who's on it, is wearing brown face. The guy's got, like, brown face paint on. So he's so, a white guy. And, and, <laughs> a, and a little, little like, stick-on goatee. Oh, my God. That is... <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. Because that's not going to offend anybody. You know? Oh, my goodness. So uh, there's only one bad review on the male version, though. It says, this is ridiculous. Dressing up like other cultures for alleged purpose of having fun is not okay. Especially when, in a lot of cases, people who buy and wear costumes like this do it solely as a way to make fun of the culture, not as a form of appreciation. Stop cultural appropriation. Well, I don't necessarily disagree with the uh, statements that it's probably not nice to... Uh, appropriate somebody else's culture why don't you go ahead and ask the native americans what they think about this whole situation oh my god or here's a thought people make fun of everybody fucking calm down i and that's the thing if i seen this like i'd say i'm a christian i don't know i don't know the order i'm getting i'm like what the fuck ever but if i seen someone like in a jesus outfit or something and there was like i'm sure you've never once gotten offended (laughs) if there was like a titty hanging out i'd be like okay that's that's fucked up Okay. Whatever. All right, but uh, okay. Well, here's a thought. I'm a fat dude. People walk around wearing fat suits for Halloween. Do you see me complaining? Yeah, it's and that's the thing. Like, yeah, I don't. You're right. I really don't get offended by anything. 
everything's funny to me. I can't. That's how I deal with shit. Whatever you know. But um, yeah. yeah there's I, no reason to get upset about everything. I know. And and you, it's. <laughs> People need to learn to have a little more chill. Yeah, they need, they need to be shoving heroin up their ass instead, you know. And that's the thing. I, I I'm a busy person. I do I do something every day and stuff like that. I wouldn't have the time to sit there and write something out. Like I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna look for something to be pissed off today, and then just you know. That's that's this day and age, man. Everybody's looking for something to be mad about. And I I don't know what it is. I don't know if people aren't busy enough. The whole PC thing comes around every. Probably once every ten years or so, it makes a big resurgence for resurgence for a couple years. Then everybody calms down again, and then they get all uptight again for a while. So 2015, 2016, these are the years of everybody being butthurt. Yeah, and I, I actually, it's funny you brought that up because I sort of see that. I see a lot of my friends right now deleting Facebook, deleting stuff because they're like, I'm missing out on so much that because I'm staring at my fucking phone all day. Uh, and you know you could be right. It, this could be done in a while because it's it'll everything. Be, it'll be over with. Everybody yeah. wants to seem self righteous, and uh, there's a lot of people. The, the dangerous thing about that, though, is when people get so PC, then you get a bunch of ignorant fucks who are even more opposed to it because people are all about it. So then you end up with this ridiculous cultural backlash between two groups of people. Mm-hmm. And then you get get like these people who are sitting there screaming about, you know what? Fuck everybody. Fuck everything. I'm not going to be PC. I'm going to say whatever I want. Hey, this motherfucker's out here insulting everybody. I'm going to get behind him. And then you've got that mess. It's it's not a good situation to get into. I know. And, and I see like the hipster movements big these fucking days that I don't fucking know. I see emo kids are coming back. I never thought that would happen. I thought emo kids turned into hipsters. I know, but they're coming back. I don't know if they're turning back into it. I don't know if it's like a gremlin thing. Well, don't feed him after midnight. Well, emo is a, <laughs> I thought emo was a self uh, self destroying problem. Eventually, they uh, never mind. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to get. Into I've known it. you for a while, Jay, and that was pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and moving along. Moving along. Um, but it's cool to be a social justice warrior these days. No, don't use that word. What, but, and that's the thing. Don't use that that's, term. That's what that's, they're fucking calling them. No, that's what, that's what <laughs> ignorant racist fucks are calling people. Uh, it's okay to, to have some sort of compassion for other cultures. Uh, that that's okay. I know, but it's like we talked about that name. You know, it, it gives a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, it does. Yeah. This whole social ju- pe- people who are usually ignorant fucks are the ones screaming the word social justice warrior. Yeah, I can't support it. Those people. Well, well, I don't know. Whatever the fuck you want to call them. But the thing is, is it's just I think people are so focused on doing what's you know different or whatever. Like the, like I seen a picture uh, the other day of this woman, and she's making a statement. It was like a photography thing. And she's talking about gun control. Um, And she's saying, if we could ban all guns and it would save one child's life, it would be worth it. And the funny thing is, she's wearing a shirt that says, I had an abortion. (laughs) Because she's very pro-choice. Because she also makes pro-choice. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I think people are so focused on doing what's right and what's different, they don't even realize what the fuck they're talking about. It's, It's the cool thing to do these days is to... You know, oh, I'm going to stick up for this. And when you probably don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, you know what? I call it the Tumblr effect. Yeah. Because it's just a bunch of jackasses on Reddit and Tumblr who, who get in this echo chamber. And mm-hmm. it's, self, it's self-reaffirming. Everything you believe, if you want to go find 50,000 other people to talk about it and believe the exact same things you do, you're going to sit there and be like, oh, I was right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's confirmation bias. You go out and you seek other people who believe the same things you do. It's the exact same thing that would happen if you were to buy a car and then you go and you look at reviews in that car and and try to find the positive ones to make sure that you made a sound decision. That's exactly what happens. And because of the internet being so prevalent, and I shouldn't shit talk the internet as much as I do because that gives us the ability to go do this. Yeah, exactly. But people have gotten to the point where they can find anything they want. They can find any kind of basement dwelling jackasses who believe the exact same drivel and, and, and vitriol that they yep. believe in and, vampire and facials vampire <laughs> facials and it gets around the world so fast anymore that anybody who believes in this shit can, can have such a self-reaffirming position 
that they end up feeling empowered by their own ignorance. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is I know this stuff. When I see pictures like that of you know a woman saying that, and her shirt says I abort, I had an abortion. I know that's just one minority in the back sure. of my head. But I still am like, I I get this self you, feeling of like, God, people are fucking stupid, you know. Well, I, yeah. And I know better. The stupid people are are invading invading everywhere yeah and and i know better i just i'm still you, you know i'm guilty what, of it you can believe what you want to believe if mm -hmm. you believe abortions are fine that's fine that's your position that you're allowed to have that but you know don't sit there and counter uh, count, <laughs> counter -act. contradict yourself two minutes later <laughs> in another statement i know and that's the thing. And, and another thing this is the first time in humans life that we have the internet and we're still dealing with it. We really don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> we as a society haven't figured out the ways to do it. I mean, uh, I'm thankful that I came up in a time when the internet wasn't prevalent. Oh my God, yeah. No no other... I had no computer. People on Earth has experienced what we're experiencing right now with the internet. And it's great. I mean, I, I have... in When I was coming up in... in Mostly the uh, younger grades, middle school, elementary school, we didn't have computers. Uh, very few people did. Mm -hmm. Only when you went to computer lab, it was like, <gasps> yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And you started playing uh, on basic, learning how to program, moving the little turtle. Yeah, remember that shit. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we we had a time before computers were super prevalent in everything, so we know what it's like to have them and what it's not, and we understand what a magical thing it is that we have a device this big that fits into our back pocket. That has all of the world's knowledge at our fingertips. Because mm -hmm. we didn't have that. We didn't have that, no. There was no point in human history until now that we had all the world's knowledge in our back pocket anytime we wanted. I mean, we used to have to have the Guinness Book of World Records to tell us and yeah. settle our bar arguments. Encyclopedia. I mean, yeah, we had to go look shit up at the library. Yep. Nowadays, your libraries are mostly online. And that's the thing. Wikipedia like, is everything. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I could be born into a place where I wasn't appreciated of that stuff. Like, well, if you were if you were born now, you wouldn't know any different. I know, but normal. don't get me started on, you know, I just, I think, you know, every generation says, all oh, kids these days, but I just, I don't know. I don't understand. Those damn kids. kids yeah, and those, they're drugs. Whippersnappers. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm old and I can start saying that. But... I just, I don't know. I think they don't really appreciate stuff because everything's handed to them. Like you said, everything is in the back pocket. Anything you want to know. And you can't bullshit anyone anymore. Yeah. Uh, a no, lot of conversations. you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. A, lo a lot of people, you know, a lot of hanging out back in the day was people at bars and stuff. They're just like, hey, bullshitting each other. And it, it created conversation. Conversations today are, oh, Really? I'll check real quick. You you can't be right, and they just fucking Google it real quick. And then, uh, I do that shit too. I know, I know, I know, I do too. I, mean, I end an argument sometimes when I know I know the answer. <laughs> like I'll, I'll Google that. I'll Google that. You son of a bitch. It's called boofing. <laughs> it's it's not the nicest thing in the world to do. Actually, that's yeah, pretty pretty shitty editing. Yeah, and, and then the thing is, is do I, you really have to win the argument? Nah, nah. I, I'm guilty of it. I am yeah. so guilty of it. I piss my wife off with that shit constantly because <laughs> I just can't help myself. Uh -huh. Like if I hear something that I think's wrong, I have to go in and see for myself. Yep. She thinks I'm doing it to prove it wrong, but that's not at all the case. Yeah, it's you. It's, it's you. Me. Yeah. I need to prove it to myself whether it's right or wrong, whether I was right, whether I was wrong. But still, it's shitty etiquette. Don't do it, man. Yeah. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I can just be such a fucking clown some days. I don't understand what the hell I'm doing. I know. It's ridiculous. It's <laughs> it's such a funny thing. <laughs> it is a funny thing. Speaking of clowns, let's let's get this shit out of the way right now. Uh, we we have a clown special report going on. Uh, this is OHO World News Reports, and we are going to talk about the clown sightings. Okay, first off, we have clown reportedly attracts boy in Detroit suburb with a knife. So what happened is a creepy clown attacked a nine-year-old boy in his mobile home park, because of course it was a mobile home park, with a butter knife. Uh, the boy has sustained an injury, but it's not clear currently whether it was whether he was cut by the clown or whether he was injured when he moved away from the butter knife. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. And then next up, we have we have Newark man dressed as a clown shot in the head and killed. We talked about that one briefly last week. Uh, that's the one that said uh, you either need to take them clown masks off before the coroner does. So we've had one fatality at least so far in the United States. I'm sure there's more. Uh, so if you end up as a creepy clown, and go ahead and uh, go chase people. You might get shot in the head. Also, you may get beaten up with a baseball bat when you, uh, when you decide to dress up as a creepy clown. 
Uh, one U.S. man got a massive beating yesterday after dressing up as a creepy clown and trying to scare a group of people in a car. One of the people in the car refused to get out of the car. I would say this is the smart one of the bunch. <laughs> While the others grabbed a baseball bat and beat the shit out of this guy in a clown suit and stole his balloons. They stole the motherfuckers' Those balloons. Those motherfuckers. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. They stole the motherfuckers' balloons. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. They stole his balloons, and they beat him up in the leg. They they, they, they hit him in the knee with a, with a baseball bat, knock him <laughs> to the ground, and punch the shit out of him. Oh, my God. Uh, Knife-wielding clown menaces subway riders, chases teen out of the station. A creepy clown uh, on a subway in Manhattan chased a teenager out of a train station. Uh, the 16-year-old boy was getting off the subway station at 96th Street on Lexington Avenue when he was attacked by a man in a clown mask. A uh, clown was standing in the doorway of a train preventing people with e from exiting. He had a kitchen knife in his hands. Uh, the man ran, well, the teen ran through the turnstile and up a flight of stairs. When he turned around to check and see if the clown was following him, following him, he found, uh, the man with a kitchen knife. <laughs> this is New York, people. I've been to New York. <laughs> you are taking your life in your hands if you take a knife and wield it against other people, other New Yorkers. There's a 50-50 chance either they're going to beat the hell out of you or they're going to completely ignore you because this is New York and that shit's normal. Uh, the White House has even gotten involved in this. Oh, God. Here we go. The White House uh, <laughs> said that law enforcement takes creepy clowns seriously and urged people not to put on the makeup and try to scare people because uh, it's your own damn fault if they kill your ass. <laughs> but on a positive note, on uh, October 15th in Tucson, Arizona, we have a Clown Lives Matter march scheduled. Oh, my Organizers God. are planning a Clown Lives Matter march... Oh, uh, to 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 uh, take some of the heat off of the creepy clown incidents that have been happening in the mail lately. According to a flyer advertising the event, this is a peaceful way to show clowns are not psycho killers. We want the public to feel safe and not be afraid. So come out, bring the family, meet a clown, and get a hug. Let me read that again. <laughs> This is a peaceful way to show clowns are not psycho killers. Oh, we want the public to feel safe, not be afraid, so come out, bring the family, meet a clown, and get a hug. That couldn't have been more scary had they been trying to make it scary. <laughs> this is getting out of hand, Jay. This is getting so out of hand. <laughs> and I'm Rich Floppy Shoes, coming this. live at you with OHO World News Reports on the Creepy Clown Sightings. Oh, man. Come back next week for more Creepy Clown Sightings on OHO World News Re Review. Oh, man. I can't do this anymore. This is too much. I don't get it. Why the hell? What would possess somebody to dress up like a clown and scare people? I know. Fucking assholes. I know. <laughs> Ever since uh, August when they started doing that shit in South Carolina, if you go out of the house dressed as a clown and somebody attacks you, it's your own fucking fault. I know. Woe, woe is me. Woe is me. And we talked about this last week. I remember, and in, in, it was the 80s or something like that, uh, people used to do this, but they didn't have knives and shit. The the one guy, I remember, he was uh, holding balloons, and he would dress up like a clown, and he'd stand under a street light at night and just stand there. And people were like, yo. And then it got, but now they're starting to carry knives. They're starting to, like, taunt people and shit. Uh, You're going to get your ass beat. Let me remind you about <laughs> John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there were creepy clowns long before this 80s thing. I know, but that's the thing. Like, people were just joking around before. Now it's like, hey. John Wayne Gacy murdered people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there was no joking around here. That's the thing. Um, he, he, had a, he had a persona called Pogo the Clown, and he used to play children's birthday parties. Yeah. But, it, yeah, it's just getting out of hand. Nothing worse than a creepy fat dude dressing up like a clown. And I know. I like I know that would that would give me fucking nightmares. <laughs> that, would, that would give me fucking nightmares. I know. Yeah, this is getting out of hand. Like I said, people used to do this as like a joke. They'd stand there, they'd hold balloons, and then they'd go away. And I've seen a lot of videos now where they have knives, like you said. They're taunting people. They're not letting them go places. Like the one I was watching, this guy wouldn't let him go home. He was like blocking him from the street. The guy put his beard down. He's like, all right, you made me put my beard down. Now, not that he was a creepy clown, but he put his beard down and he beat the fuck out of this clown. <laughs> Back off your thing. Uh, Jesus. I, I, if somebody beats your ass and you're dressed up like a creepy clown, it's your own fucking fault. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, you're being a fucking dick. 
Yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, by the way, the the original one that I heard about, uh, that I told you about in uh, North or South Carolina, I forget which one it was, where they said that uh, the clowns lived in the woods, that turned out to be a hoax. Oh, it was. So this whole thing sweeping around the nation, it wasn't even a real thing. Now it's becoming real. Uh, I even heard a story about a cr- clown with a brink- blinking nose standing out by a dumpster at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> If you stand out by a dumpster at 2.30 in the morning with a blinking nose and somebody beats you up, you don't get the cry to mommy Why, why was it. he there? Was it prom night and there was abortions in there? What was going on? Prom night dumpster babies. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I'm bored. I'm standing by this fucking dumpster. He's like, I tried the phone clap thing. Didn't work. So I'm going to dress like a clown. I can see scaring some kids on Halloween. I used to love that shit. Yeah. But now, and like I said, with the knives and stuff like that. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. And what was it? The subway you said? He wasn't letting him on subway. Yeah, yeah, he was. You're just being a fucking asshole now. You're getting to the point where you're not scaring people. You're not tricking people. Uh, It reminds me of a video I saw where these kids went to a grocery store and they're like milk prank, and it was them pretending they fell and they just threw milk in the air and spilled it everywhere. That's not a prank. You're being a fucking asshole because they just run out of the store. There's. I think people are confused what a prank is and what being a fucking asshole is, and that's what I'm seeing with this clown thing. It's just everyone's being a fucking dick lately, and ugh, just it's too much, Jay. Did you did you see the video of uh, the creepy clown getting beat up by the baseball bat? Oh, there's a video of it. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at this. I like it how they're bleeping it out when they're about to beat the fuck. Look at this guy though. He's like walking up all menacingly and shit. This guy deserves to get an ass kicking. I mean, you guys got balloons. You can't really see his face in the video. He almost looks like a bucket head. Yeah, it's a really bad shot. That You can see the balloons, though. Oh, and right to the side of the knee with the fucking... Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. They just beat the shit out of this poor guy. I like how at the beginning of the video, he's like, don't swear, man. You're going to see a lot of violence. <laughs> the violence is okay, but don't swear, man. He just beats the <laughs> shit out of the... Well, these guys just beat the shit out of this poor clown. I'm sorry. It's your own fault at that point. Yeah. Um, I mean, you buckethead looking motherfucker. Wherever <laughs> you are, I hope you recover. But I hope you learn some shit from that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, yeah, he sort of did look like buckethead. I didn't, yeah, and you're holding fucking balloons. You know, was, balloons are meant for heroin in your butt. Yeah, <laughs> Not 100, 110 people. of them up your ass. That's what you need to do. <laughs> exactly. All right, I got uh, I got one more good one for you tonight. Uh, vegan mom charged with malnourishing 11-month-old son. So in Pennsylvania again, uh, and I swear to God, our home state here, PA, is starting to turn into the new Florida. First the Amish. <laughs> we, used to, we used to have the fucking adventures of Florida, man, but now I think it's starting to become Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and that's what we were talking about last week. Pennsylvania's... We're getting pretty- fucking weird here. It's not even just what we're I, rednecks and I shit I think here. we were always weird, and no one really cared about Pennsylvania. I think we're well, making last Pennsylvania time- weird. We're bringing it out. We're bringing it out. No, we're not. It's, it's This made national news. Uh, a Pennsylvania mother has been charged with child endangerment after investigators found her 11-month son. Uh, I'm reading this straight off Fox News, so uh, that's that's the credit for this, this story. <laughs> CBS Pittsburgh reported that a 33-year-old Elizabeth Hawk fa- followed a strict vegan diet and sometimes imposed her extreme nutrition nutritional val- views to her family mem- members. Damn, I can't talk today. Uh, this is the best, though. Her sister-in-law, Brandy Hawk, recalled her saying she was going to live on water and sunlight. Ugh. Uh, When Brandy noticed the boy, whose name wasn't disclosed, had a severe rash and seemingly delayed motor skills, Elizabeth brushed off her concerns. She denied that there was anything wrong with her son and blamed the rash on allergies. Uh, Her brother and the the sister-in-law did not buy it because they apparently have brains that are evolved beyond that of a garden slug. (laughs) Uh, So anyway, she was split up from her husband, who apparently also had brains above that of a garden slug. And he said, I got to save my kids. Uh, Brandy recalled referring to the couple's three shared children. 
Specialists found that the 11 month old had been suffering from developmental delays that left him at a failure to thrive level. And that his fruit and nut only diet was causing physical deterioration. Oh my god. Wait, so he was actually disintegrating? Disintegrating. Well, he was deteriorating. He he wasn't oh my he wasn't developing the muscles and brain material that he needed, lung material. He was not developing like he should have been oh. in order to thrive. Jesus fucking um, Christ. There's a happy ending though. Uh Authorities how <laughs> authorities rob this dumb shit uh, mm -hmm. uh, of this child and gave the or brought her what is it okay yes uh, a foster home get put this child in a foster home and now he's doing great he's completely turned around he's he's put on weight he's gotten healthy but what the fuck is wrong with people people hear the word vegan. They think they know what they're talking about, and they have no fucking clue. Dude, I'm sorry. If you have something <laughs> against eating animals and shit for your religious reasons or your fucking ideological reasons, don't pose that on your goddamn kids. Mm -hmm. I used to work for a vegan who didn't want to fucking give his kids anything, and his, uh, his parents told him that if he did not at least give those children eggs to get them the proper nutrition, that she was going to have his kids taken away. And you know what? They should have been. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't even get me started on that. Oh no, let's oh. get started. On that. <laughs> no, I'm talking about our old uh, yeah. uh, our old job. Um, <coughs> We're not naming names here. Yeah. We can talk about uh, it. <coughs> this motherfucker's children ran around with no diapers on, just shitting on the floor. Yeah. His older kid came from a previous marriage and was actually sane, although yeah. he had the name of a tree. <laughs> Everything was nature with them. Oh. Yeah, well, he had the name of a tree because, of course, he did. But uh, he was so frustrated in any given moment with these people because they just let his little siblings run around, no mm -hmm. diapers on. They didn't cook their. He'd food. come down and tell us. Oh yeah, he'd tell us. He'd all be like, about "There's it. A He's. Uh, I'm like, "Hey man, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I don't want to be upstairs." I'm like, "Why is that?" He's like, "Oh, there's shit everywhere, and you know the kids aren't wearing diapers again, so there's just poop everywhere. And it's disgusting." I mean, if you have an <laughs> ideal, and they never looked healthy. Nah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I mean, the wife in this relationship. I remember she had a a, a rash on her face for months. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me that shit's healthy for you. Yeah. I, if you want to be a vegan, that's fine, but do not impose that on your kids. Yep. Children do not deserve that kind of shit. I, yeah, I don't think anything should be imposed on kids. I think one of the great things about having kids is letting them do what they want. Let, and that's why they say reading is important. Let them read, sure. let them do, and let them make their own decisions. Here's the deal, too. Like, I consider myself a Christian, as I've mentioned before on yeah. the show. But I do not impose religion on my children. I nope. want them to get yep. a little older because I feel like they need yep. to make their own path. Mm -hmm. I was brought up in a Christian household, and I had it, I wouldn't say thrust upon me, but I was exposed to it at an early age. And um, there was a point in time in my teenage years when I had a hard time deciding whether or not I wanted to believe that or go on or be an atheist or be something yeah, else. Yeah, the decision was atheist. put on yourself to make it. You, uh, I was I was given the option to, mm -hmm. to explore that, and thank God I did because I did come back to Christianity and believe that was where I wanted to go. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to do that to my kids. I'm going to wait till they're a little older, and yep. then they, they can make their own decisions based upon Because that's how feel. I was raised. I The only thing that was pressed to upon but it wasn't you know that crazy was casey you got to go to church you got to go to church well i went none to of church it, but... yeah it wasn't but none of it was like you have to go to church because you're sinning and your stuff it was like casey it's something you got to do we go to church every sunday and i didn't even have to do that for a long time i chose to do that oh really but it was me choosing to yeah. do it and that's what i'm saying my i don't think my parents were pushing it on me to you know be religious it's just like hey we go to church you should come with us and, and that's the thing. They were never like, oh, if you do this, you go to hell. If you do that, you'll go to hell. They were just like, hey, we go to church. And they were letting me make the decision for myself. Well, I if had, I wanted to or not. Right. And uh, I can't take credit for this because somebody way funnier than I did came up with it. But uh, <laughs> uh, the saying I always love is religion is like a dick. You can have it. You can be proud of it. Yeah. But don't wave it around. Uh, don't wave it around in public. Mm -hmm. And don't try to shove it down my children's throats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's not like people from religion have ever done that, Jay. <laughs> Priest! <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and... Right. Then... Right. 
And that's the thing, like, everything is shoved down everyone's yeah, throat these days. Let me use that word. And, uh, no one... Father John, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my God, what are you doing? <laughs> they, said... <laughs> they said bread and wine, not penis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, you see so much of everything shoved in your face shoved in your face and when we were growing up like you were talking about we that just wasn't a thing it was hey we do this because we're a fan it was more about family we do this we're a family we're gonna spend some time together and it was more of letting you decide what happens you know giving you the choice of how you're gonna take this how are you gonna do everything and you know that that's just our two things though but who knows how everyone else went through it and stuff but I, I just don't believe it's right to to force beliefs on a child yeah if you do fine that's that's your deal it's my personal choice but I'm not gonna impose my views on you either yeah and how we were talking about people read stuff on the internet they take it too seriously or whatever I think this is the case of that a lot of people read stuff they think it's cool I don't know if this is why and they don't know really what they're doing and they just do it anyways well, you get you get jackasses out there on like YouTube comments are are the biggest swill on the face of the internet. It's I, like I mean, it is literally just like farts <laughs> incarnate. It, it, it's it's another dimension. YouTube comments, uh, it, and you know, you go on here and people will, will sit there and you'll watch it like a heavy metal music video. I'm a metalhead. I'm a fan. So's he. Yes. Um, and it's just it, people always say things like, oh. Satan must be coming. You're giving your life to Satan, <laughs> etc. You know, it's so ridiculous. I've talked to a Satanist, and you know what he told me? If Satan's such a bad guy, why does he punish bad people? <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck. That's, not, that's not even a Satanist. <laughs> I know, but that, that was like, I was like, my mind was blown right there. I was like, I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, you got to have your yang with your yin. Yeah, that's it's true. It's the way it is. <laughs> but, uh... Most Satanists don't even believe in Satan as a real entity. They believe in... They're atheists. Yeah. And uh, what they believe is that Satan represents the side that you repress mm -hmm. when you're a Christian about yeah. having fun and exploring your carnal desires and yeah. things like that. I can understand that position. I don't necessarily agree with it because if you don't repress your carnal desires, you go out and do some dumb shit sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although I will say this, uh, feminists, not real ones, but feminazis <laughs> out there, uh, we do not play video games in order to suppress our rape urges. <laughs> I have never once in my entire life as a man decided, you know what? I want to rape that bitch. <laughs> I better go play some video games so I can suppress that. And, and the way they explain it, I feel like they think we're going to like scratch our necks like crackheads. They're like. Yo, man, I gotta rape some more. We gotta, we gotta get, get, get some pussy, man. I gotta rape. I gotta, I gotta play that Grand Theft Auto, dog. <laughs> if I don't get some Mega Man X, man, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some bitch down on the ground and fucking take me, take him. Every bitch is getting it. Yeah, and, and and that's oh man, and that's how I picture them thinking we are. Is it's just scratching our necks like a crack addict. <laughs> Stop listening to tumble, Tumblr, people. <laughs> go out there and make your own opinions. Uh, the smartest thing that you can do as a human being is go out and form your own opinions about things. Mm -hmm. Go and do research and think about things for yourself. Yeah. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people are too dumb to think for themselves, but yes. hey. Yes. And uh, Hell, even though those of you out there who call yourselves Christians who are going out there and, and uh, posting horrible, terrible things on YouTube comments, read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I bet you didn't. I did. Yeah. I went to Catholic school. <laughs> you know why I went to Catholic school? Because I grew up in Philly, where the public school... Born and raised, sorry. <laughs> French <laughs> Prince of Bel-Air just went out. My dad took a job in Philly because he didn't understand the concept of uh, cost of living. <laughs> we're from this small town where we're broadcasting this from, but my dad, uh, being the, the idiot he is thought, well, if I move around Philly, I'll make all this money. Yeah, but it costs three times as much to live. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I grew up there, and uh, my first few years of school, elementary school, were there. They, they were fucking roaches in the bathroom. I'm not talking about the bugs. I'm talking about what's left over after you smoke a joint. They're, they're roaches in the bathroom. In the <laughs> I'm Catholic, glad you clarified that. In the public schools. 
So my mom put me in Catholic school because she thought it would be a, a good alternative. So I learned a lot about Christianity. I learned a lot about the Catholic Catholic doctrine. I'm not Catholic, but I'm a Presbyterian if we really want to get into it. But, mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot about things that a lot of people don't know because I was forced. I had a class. It was called religion. We had to read the Bible. We had to study the Bible, what it meant. We had to learn how to interpret it for ourselves. And I consider myself fairly well-versed on theology because of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sit here and tell you this. A lot of the shit in the Bible are fucking stories. Yeah. Okay? They're there to teach you a reason, uh, t- teach you a-, a lesson. They're life lessons. They're not, they're not necessarily uh, word of law straight off the get-go. I mean, if my wife disobeys me, she is not going to turn into a pillar of salt. <laughs> my wife, believe it or not, has her own opinions. I know. Women, they're allowed to talk? What? Yes. <laughs> she, she's allowed to, to form her own opinions. Uh, shellfish, you're, if, you, if you follow the, the, the Bible to the letter of the law, mm-hmm. oh my God, the Bible bans homosexuality. You may not lay with another man. Yeah, the uh, Bible also bans shellfish. Yeah. Right after that, about saying if you lay with another man or, or well, it's a woman. it's not in the same paragraph. Yeah. But... Right, I think right after that, it says if you wear synthetic clothes, you go to hell. Synthetic clothes, you go to hell. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever worn polyester, <laughs> I guess you're fucked. Uh, uh, if gold, you eat, diamonds, yeah, you can't if you wear eat any shellfish, of shellfish, you go. If oh, you yeah. covet thy neighbor's possessions, i.e. our entire capitalist society is based <laughs> on coveting, uh, you're going to hell. Uh, how about the fact you fucking sit there and perform uh, some sort of thought process and decide for yourselves what you believe and not believe rather than mm-hmm. sit here and claim that it's in the book because you know what i read the book no nah. people are full of shit <laughs> no and, and people take it too literally and it's like you can't it's it's basically life lessons yes i'm That's... not gonna sit here and say that you you know what i bet you someday down the road i'm ripping this off from chris rock but it's fucking true <laughs> someday uh in the past somebody was probably like you know what people eating these fucking shellfish out of the sea they're killing people we tell them god said we can't do that <laughs> you know what? That's probably what it is. The book was written by men. Yeah. And regardless whether or not there was uh, some sort of divine intervention, there were still men who colored it with their own opinions and beliefs. Yeah, and that's all it is. It's just opinions of what... And, and people are just taking things too serious. They don't understand stuff. Like going back to how this whole conversation started about the vegan thing. I see a lot of people... One, one time in my life, you remember this. I wanted to see what vegetarian was all about. I oh, went vegetarian. vegetarian, Casey. That was, that was a dark few months. I went vegetarian just to the fact to see if I felt better as a person physically, you know, and I did. I felt lighter. I felt I jumped around more, but I did it right. A lot of people that go vegetarian end up gaining a lot more weight than they did before because they think, hey, just don't eat meat. But that's not the whole point. So what they do is they go out and buy Valveeta. And all this pasta. It's not it's not me. <laughs> so they start so they start eating it and everything like that and they gain a bunch of weight because they're eating this processed bullshit. But the, it's vegetarian. You're supposed to be eating more vegetables. Vegetables? <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> and and that's how you lose the weight is by you you t- eat a lot more stuff that comes from the ground shit, but you still you know, just don't put your feet in the sand. You're like, I ate today. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm going to sit here and pull a Dr. Phil moment. I'm a fat dude telling you how to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. So take this with a grain of salt. But you know what? Eat less food. Move more. Exactly. Move more. Yeah. <laughs> don't try the juice cleanse. Don't don't go low carb. Don't go paleo. Just eat less. Eat yeah. less. Move more. Yeah, because working um, in restaurants my whole life, I've talked to a lot of foreign people. I've... And the first thing they say is, the food was great, but why do you serve so much? Well, uh, it's an experience. Yeah. You're not expected to eat everything on your plate, but you know what? Here's the deal. Uh, let me give you guys a little bit of uh, background history on restaurants. The reason that they existed uh, in the first place is royalty used to have a lot of private chefs. And uh, that's what they did. They, they, those people were there to create dishes for royalty. Well, there was points in time when even royalty came on hard times, and they ended up releasing a lot of these people in, into the general public. So what ended up happening is these chefs 
uh, who used to work for kings and lords and other type of royalty used to create these restaurants to give the common man a day to feel like a king. They gave huh. somebody the opportunity to go out and get that same experience, a custom meal crafted for you. Yeah, so that's any, anyway, that's how all restaurants came about is because these medieval chefs had nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. So they created these restaurants to give everybody an opportunity to feel like a king. Unfortunately, the thing about that is you get these jackasses who come to restaurants nowadays and feel like they deserve everything. Yep. yep. I don't know what it is, but people are very polite, usually. <laughs> but for some reason, when they come to a restaurant, that fucking shit just flies out the window. You know they're what? like, fuck life. Everyone sucks. I'm going to be a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're paying for the experience. Yeah. And that's fine and good. You can pay for the experience. But, you know... That doesn't mean that you need to be a complete asshat and throw everything that you believe in about how to treat people out the door. Yeah. You know what? Just be... Uh, and tipping. Tipping, if you live in the United States, is not optional. Yeah. Okay? I'm looking at you. <laughs> you out there. you the one who's saying, oh, tipping is based on performance. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah here's the deal. You know what? If you uh, go to your job and you didn't do a good job that day, you had an off day, does anybody take your money away? Yeah. No, they don't. Exactly. But e- even barring that, even if you're going to not tip somebody because they were jackass to you, I get that. But but here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off. Okay, Kanye. Kanye's, Kanye's interrupting. The, the the tipping thing, if if some bitch is you know coming to your table and be like, fuck you, you know, here's your meal, blah, blah, blah. And she's being just a fucking bitch or him, whatever. Don't tip him. That's fine. But if something happens that just gets you outside your bubble, like, oh, there was, you know, my pickle. I was out of fish. Yeah, my pickle wasn't placed right on my plate. I, that bitch ain't getting a tip. <laughs> it's not the server's fault. I know. It's not the server's fault. And here's another thing. I, I've done my time in kitchens. Generally, it's our fault. But you yeah. know what? We're making food for 50, 50, 60, 70 other people right now. Sorry if my pickle, your pickle wasn't on the spot. I'm trying. And tipping, okay, they're like, all the countries don't do it. But here's the thing. But in the U.S., you have to. Yeah, it's based on. It's ingrated so hard into our system, you have to tip. Yeah, these people only make three bucks an hour. I dude. know. And the whole reason why they make three bucks an hour is because the food cost. Since it's ingrated into our system so much, people base food costs of paying that waitress $2 an hour. And you know what? If you want the world to go to a no-tipping policy, that's fine. But you need to be okay with paying a lot more for your meal. Yeah, that's why the food is so expensive in rest or like cheap it, as well, it is in restaurants. Well, yeah. If you go to say, if you spend ten dollars for burger and fries in the United States, just for an instance, if you go to France, where tipping is not a common thing, you're going to spend fifteen dollars for that burger and fries. Yeah, the whole reason why the food is. Th- that price on that menu is so they can pay or is because they pay waitresses that low amount of money right. so they can you know make the food prices that right cheap waitresses are not your bitch yeah okay they're out there trying to earn a living and tipping is not optional and it it's is really sad. not yeah for those of you out there i've actually gotten in arguments on the internet because of this in youtube comments i should have known better uh, the who, who, <laughs> who refuse to tip just because they think that that's stupid. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think it's stupid too. As somebody who's done time in restaurants, look at it. <laughs> listen to me talking about it like it's a fucking like it's a prison <laughs> sentence. I've done time in restaurants, man. It ain't an option. You got to do it. Yeah. If you don't do it, if you can't afford to leave a tip, you can't afford to eat out, man. Nah. Go to McDonald's where they don't expect that shit. And I wish uh, someone would open a restaurant where they paid the waitresses. Oh, they do. Minimum they waste. They oh, exist. they do? Okay. There, there's restaurants out there that they Where you pay, pay like 50 bucks for a pizza? Oh, sure. <laughs> That's the thing. There's restaurants out there where people pay the, the waitresses livable wages and give them health insurance, give them the whole nine. God damn, but where are these at? <laughs> big cities where people don't mind spending a bit more money. Man. That's the deal. If you as a person don't believe in tipping, you as a person better try to talk to your uh, your local restaurant owners and tell them, hey, we'll pay $25, $30 for a cheeseburger and fries. Uh huh. Because if you don't, then they can't afford to go without tipping. Yeah, and opinion. the people that think, oh, I'm, I'm giving this tip money and they didn't really do anything, the whole reason you're giving the tip money is so you didn't pay fucking $1,000 for a fucking side of french fries. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to think of it that way because it's it, and it is weird. It's a weird system, 
But the thing is, it's so ingrated into the restaurant system these days, you can't really get past it. So, so tip your waitress, tip your waiter, because you're going to be paying a lot more food, you know, if they paid waitresses minimum wage and everything. It's just, that's the way it works. You can't really, it's, it's too integrated. You can't. Yeah. We've uh, been doing it for how long? We used to not do it because it was considered rude to tip your waitress Mm -hmm. and waiter. But then uh, around the time of the Depression, when restaurants could get away with it, they encouraged their waiters and waitresses to accept tips so they could pay them less. Yeah. That's the way our culture is. Yeah, I know. Deal with it. Yep. If you don't like it, tell them you're okay with paying more. <laughs> I uh, just, it's, yeah, and that's the thing. It, and what we were talking about, like this whole conversation, people just don't know what they're talking about. You know, get, get, get to know what you're talking about. And that's what I'm saying. Go, go to do one, your research. Yeah, go one of those restaurants. Okay, that they pay their waitresses minimum wage and everything, and see how expensive the menu is. If if you don't believe us, do it. Fact check. <laughs> by, by minimum wage, we mean uh, seven and a quarter or whatever it is. An oh hour, yeah. Uh, as opposed to minimum wage for a tipped employee, which is around two two something seventy five. Nah. Actually, Pennsylvania's minimum wage is a lot lower than other states. Well, I think we, we might we be the lowest low. in the country. We go I'm off not the sure federal minimum wage. Yeah, everyone else around us is nine or eight or something. We're like, what? What were we at? Seven fifteen. We, we have a lower cost of living area. Yeah, there too. that's true. All right, I think that's about all we have time for today. Uh, this has been the Openly Hostile Opinions podcast. Remember, we're available on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and your favorite podcasting platform. If you don't want to miss out on any of the running visual gags, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, like, favorite, and review. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Our email address is openlyhostileopinions at gmail.com. Uh, if you have anything you want to talk about on the show, you want us to uh, answer any questions, please send us an email, get in touch with us on Twitter. We'd be happy to bring that on to the show. All right, everybody have a good week, and we'll see you next week on Thursday. Yep, see you, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you.